What's up and good morning everybody. You know it's going to be a good day when you get to open the garage and see that big old beautiful Chevy out there. I know I've been doing a lot of truck videos lately and not so many work videos and that's just because we've been at some weird spots and uh, the projects where it's not that exciting or at least I don't think it would be that exciting to film for you guys. Well today is quite the opposite so today is going to be all construction related. Get the old work truck fired up. I'm just kidding. It's actually the work truck back there. But this one is for right now because like I said, we're not hauling anything crazy. We're not throwing a bunch of broken concrete, uh, some 16 foot pieces of lumber in it. So if we ain't gonna beat it up, we might as well drive in something a little nicer if I unlock it. So we're heading on over to the flagship project, which I'm sure you guys are realizing we head to a lot in these videos. And the reason being it is, uh, you know, it's currently my biggest project. It's the biggest project of my career. So it uh, gets the most of my attention at the moment. And we also got a lot of really cool shit going on over there. So it's cool to show you guys. I'm glad you guys have been along uh, on this journey with me. As you guys can see, I got the quadcopter here. So I'm gonna get you guys some sweet, sexy, sultry quadcopter shots. And just so you guys know, I've been filming this project since we broke ground, which this is one of the first projects I've like mentally wrapped my mind around actually filming from day one. I always like, you know, halfway through a project, I'm like, shit, I should have filmed it from day one. This one has actually been filmed from day one. So at the very end of this project, which I think we're still a couple months out from, I am going to throw together a compilation video of this entire thing getting built. And I think it's gonna be, uh, I think it's gonna be pretty badass, if not just for myself, but I'm also gonna present it to the, uh, the owners of the project. Oh, and before we go any further, this is seriously the most asked question on any of my videos, so I'm gonna address it now. My sunglasses are electric, Swing arms. I don't know if you can see the name in there. Hold on. Names on that side it Says swing arm electric swing arms, and they are by far the most comfortable sunglasses I've ever worn They don't squeeze the back of your head by your ears by your temples, whatever um, Super super comfortable. I get gnarly headaches So I was on the search for a long time to find a pair that is nice and light looks good uh, Covers your eyes good and these are them All right guys, remember when I said we got some cool shit going on on the project right now? Check this out. I've been telling you guys about these big radius glue lamps for a while and here we go. We're flying them all into place today and uh, yeah, they're pretty badass. You're gonna see this big sweet radius roof. It's gonna be, uh, it's gonna be quite the showstopper when this building's done. Where'd you learn to drive? Yeah, I saw you hit the building. I saw you hit the fucking other side. Oh, it's getting crazy. A lot of money up there. Why? Why? So you guys can now finally get an idea of the actual, actual shape of the building. It's been a long time coming. These beams have been a pain in the ass, whether it be trying to figure out with the architect what the shape and size of them are. Anyways, it's been a lot of back and forth. They're finally here, they're finally up, and we are moving along, and I'm loving seeing this progress. Today would have been a good day to have Aaron here because Aaron told everybody that he knows how to operate a forklift. I've never seen it. I still don't believe it, but uh, you know, I'd love to throw him on and see if he can actually do it. Today actually would not be a good day for that because these glue lamp beams, these radius beams are extremely, extremely expensive, and it would not be a, uh, a good practice beam to throw up in the air. But that being said, I know you guys have wanted to see a lot of Aaron, and Aaron is strictly on the block crew. He doesn't do anything but production block. Actually, he'll, he'll do brick. Me and him have done some pretty big, uh, like mini brick projects, brick veneer projects. So I take that back. But his preference and his love is laying block. He's good at it. He's fast at it. Um, he's just super productive. So Aaron's away doing uh, doing some block projects. And, you know, we'll get back with him soon. That way I can get you guys some more TJ stories, some more, uh, you know, just crazy wild tales of Aaron. So, you know, everybody thinks this stuff is easy, or at least, you know, we make it look easy. Just swing 13 beams into place and you're good to go. But if you guys can see here, they are literally threading a needle into these little slots that were left for the beams. You can see this one needs to get hit over a little bit so it drops into place. I don't even like standing under it. But, um, you know, the block, 
the block on this building had to all get put in first. So we kind of had to account for the fact that we're going to need to be able to swing some beams in and, you know, leave you enough room that you can swing it in because even with as much room as we left, it's still threading a needle. But that's why we got the A team here. And, you know, as you guys can see, I mean, they're all pretty much going in fairly easy. Now, a lot of people ask me all the time how I got into construction, why I got into construction, how I got into construction at such a young age, how I own my own company at such a young age. And in all honesty, I don't think I'm that young. I think I actually got a late start compared to what I could have had. Um, if you guys don't know, I'm 27. Uh, you know, I've been, construction's been an interest of mine my entire life. I've been creeping around construction sites my entire life. You know, it's just something I always truly enjoyed doing. I enjoy working with my hands. I enjoy building things. I enjoy creating things from nothing. Um, you know, I just have to be working with my hands. I don't do well sitting at a desk. I would never want a desk job. So I knew it was gonna be something in the construction related field. If you look back at like my second grade homework assignments where you have to explain what you wanna do for a living, uh, contractor was always what I put down. So it's something I've known early on. And I guess maybe I'm lucky that I found out early on and was able to really, uh, you know, dedicate my life to pursuing it. Cause I know there's a lot of people out there that, I mean, you know, they're in their thirties and they still don't know what they wanna do for a living. Now that being said, I can't say that construction was the, uh, you know, the first field that I was like, I'm gonna jump full bore into, you know, like I said, I've been on construction site pretty much all my life, but you know, my first real job aside from working construction in the summer was, you know, I was doing uh, I was doing open houses for a real estate agent. You know, I'd actually got dressed up somewhat decent and I would go, uh, you know, show houses to people. And that was fun and it was cool, you know, because I like real estate. I like anything property, I guess, related. I love property development, real estate, property management, um, new construction, old construction, all that kind of stuff, just super, super interests me. So I went and did that for a while, loved it, and then just kind of got bored of it. So after I did the real estate thing for a little bit, I, uh, believe it or not, I became a cart boy at a golf course. Uh, my buddy was the GM of a golf course. They were hiring a cart boy position. So, you know, I was 16, had my worker's permit or whatever, I was gung-ho. Yeah, I'll go fucking hand out golf carts and when they come back, clean them up. And then, you know, on a good day, we got to, uh, we got to go to the driving range and pick up all the golf balls. And I shit you not, guys, I worked with some of the biggest druggies um, picking up golf balls. And I'm not talking like crackheads. I'm talking like these guys loved like hallucinogens and all that gnarly shit. Which, by the way, I've never touched a drug. I don't believe in drugs. I hate drug dealers. I hate drug users. Um, I am 110% anti-drug. If you can't fucking put something down, don't pick it up. Anyways, so they... Uh, they'd be on fucking good ones, right? We only had one uh, golf cart that would pick up the golf balls. The rest you had to use the hand pickers, which sucked. Well, these guys would get there before me because I was still in high school and they apparently were not. And so they would show up before me and whoever got there first was getting the, uh, the golf cart that picked up the golf balls. Well, we'd show up, we'd go to the back of the driving range to start picking up golf balls and these guys, whatever the fuck they were on would start kicking in at that point. And I shit you not, these guys, so we had a bunch of gopher holes in the back of the driving range. And these guys, one day I'm watching them, and they're chasing these gopher holes, and we had big screwdrivers to pick golf balls out of the ground that were uh, run over, and these guys are stabbing these gopher holes, and I'm like, what the fuck are you guys doing? And they're like, dude, this is fucking Green Goblin, man. He's coming out of here, man. We gotta get him. And I shit you not, for the next two hours, they were dead set on killing this Green Goblin that was coming out of the gopher holes, and apparently yelling at him, talking shit to him, whatever. So. It kind of worked out in my benefit. These guys would just go off and into their drug-filled haze and I'd get to take the golf cart that picked up golf balls, you know, and it made my life a little bit easier. So the golf course job lasted for a little while and you know, we kind of helped turn the golf course around, which is why my buddy became the GM there as the golf course was struggling. Um, so they brought him in to kind of, kind of fix the situation. And anyways, they got turned around, it became good and I just, you know, kind of got bored of doing the same thing over and over and over again. You know, so I think by the time I called it quits on that job, I was about 17 going into my, my junior year in high school. And then I realized, you know, I need, to, uh, I need to really just chase my passion and chase my dream. And that's building shit, that's construction. It's what I loved, it's what I've always loved as a kid growing up. So I really need to focus on that. So every single day after school, I would uh, show up to the job site and go to work. And you're probably thinking, oh, I bet your schoolwork sucked. I bet you, uh, you just let everything go because you wanted to go become a blue collar worker. And no, it's quite the opposite actually. I was a 4.0 student. I've been in accelerated classes since I was uh, in second grade. I've always been a, uh, an honor student, an honor roll student. I was in AP and IB classes. So, I, I mean, you know, there's something up here. I know, it, uh, I know it may not seem like it all the time. And the problem with the crazy stigma against blue collar workers is they think that 
you know, blue collar workers are just, you know, you gave up on everything else, so you're gonna go work manual labor. And it's quite the opposite. Some of the smartest guys I know are blue collar workers. I mean, you guys know Dave from my other videos. This guy's got engineering degree, architecture degree, art degree. Um, this guy signed up for calculus three class when he was drunk in a bar one night at his age because he was bored and he thought it'd be fun. So to say, you know, blue collar workers are just, you know, this was their last chance or this was the only hope they had in life. It's quite the opposite. And boy, did I have the teachers that would sit there and preach that all day long. You know, I get asked from time to time or, you know, you'd have to do a project on what you want to do for a living or, you know, what college you're going to go to. And I'd always tell them, you know what, I don't really plan on going to college. And they say, well, what are you going to do? I was like, well, I think, you know, I want to go into construction. I want to become a, a contractor. And they would laugh at me and they said, well, why do you want to do blue collar work? Don't you want to be successful? Don't you want to go to college and be successful and be something, make something out of yourself? And I was like, yeah, that's why I'm going to be a contractor. I want to make something out of myself. I want to be somebody. I want to do my own thing. I want to make my own life for myself. So fast forward a little bit to my, uh, my senior year. You know, it's the end of the year. Everybody's signing up for SATs, talking about what college they're going to. So one of my, uh, my English teachers, he calls, he calls like a little class, I don't know, meeting or whatever. And he's like, hey, let's all discuss, you know, who signed up for SATs? Everybody raise your hand. And I didn't raise my hand. All right, everybody, let's go around the room. What college have you applied for? What college do you want to go to? He got to me and I'm like, yeah, man, I don't want to go to college. He's like, what? Like, yeah, don't want to go to college. It's like, why? Like, I'm sitting here in an accelerated English class and, you know, telling my English teacher I don't want to go to college. And so he's freaking out on me. And I'm like, yeah, dude, I want to go, you know, I want to work construction. I want to be a contractor. I want to start my own contracting business. And he's like, he laughs at me, like legitimately laughs at me. And I'm like, okay. Like, I had a pretty good relationship with a lot of my teachers. So we could kind of talk shit to each other or whatever. But he legitimately laughed at me. Kind of made a, almost made an example out of me in front of the class saying, oh, yeah, here you go, guys. This is why you go to college. You know, you got two choices in life. You can go to college or you can do this. And, you know, the funny thing is, and I'm never one to brag, but fast forward five years from that day, you know, I'm still living in the same area I went to high school in. I roll up to a store one day. I get out. I see this English teacher looking over at me. I got out of the Duramax, as you guys know, and he's over here in this, you know, beat up Honda Civic. And he went to college. In fact, he had a master's degree. So he's looking at me, I'm looking at him, and he's kind of trying to see if he recognizes me. Um, and then I think it kind of clicks for both of us. And I just give him a smile, close the door on my truck, and walk into the store. Didn't need to say any words. You know, didn't need to start no shit. Didn't need to say, hey look, not going to college seemed to work out pretty well for me. Kind of the point I want you guys to get. Um, everybody's gonna preach to you guys that college is the only way, and it's not, it's not the only way. I mean, look at, Look at this big badass creation I get to play with and make and build and have fun. Like this is this is the dream I was chasing my entire life and I finally get to do it. And like I said earlier, you know, I feel like everybody says I'm young. I feel like I could have got started earlier. I didn't start my own company till I was 24. I didn't get my general contractor's license till I was 24. So, you know, I worked under people that entire time, which was all right, but it was never quite the dream, or at least I had never fully fulfilled my dream. And I think I could say uh, I'm pretty damn close now. Now I don't want to sit here and preach one way or another whether college is the right route for you, whether blue collar works the right route for you. You're gonna know what's right for yourself, but just know that you know there's no cookie cutter option for everybody. And just because some people say one way is the way to become successful doesn't mean that's gonna work for you or doesn't mean you're gonna be happy doing it. So you kind of got to find yourself in this world and and really find out what uh, you know what you enjoy doing and what you're willing to put in that effort into. Because if you don't enjoy something, you're probably not going to be willing to put in the time and effort it takes to really succeed in that. I don't want to bore you guys too much just rambling on about uh, all this stuff. So, so if you guys have not already, check out my Instagram. It'll be right here at DMAXRhino. I do a lot of live streams and in my live streams, I'm able to interact with you guys, answer questions for you guys, um, you know, fire off as quick as you guys can ask them. I get a lot of messages from kids that are 16, 17, 18, kind of at that transition stage in their life and you know people are telling them to go one way they want to go another way in life and so i'm able to kind of help out you know like i said from the beginning of this whole thing when i started the work for apparel line and the work for movement if i could just change one person's life or help one person out in any way shape or form this entire thing is going to be worth it so you know i get all these messages and i try to get back to everybody as quickly as i can but it's not always the easiest thing because it's just there's just so many of them so the live streams on my Instagram is the best and easiest way for me to get back to you guys. And if you guys have been in them already, you guys know what Rhino's rants are. Um, there's always somebody that likes to get me fired up on some topic and then 
it's uh it's all pure entertainment from there all right guys we're gonna wrap this one up this is just a uh you know a quick video to kind of give you guys the rundown of my construction career um i'm planned on doing a uh, a much more in-depth one at some point and i also wanted to give you guys a real update on the flagship project and i'm sure you guys are gonna ask how much longer we have here and it's tough to say with this one because we've ran into some some strange things but everything's been able to be worked through but i'd say probably at least another four months give or take i mean there's got to be a giant pool going in here that we've had to hold off on because we gotta you know we need a bunch of room to crane in a bunch of shit. so there's been a lot of uh, a lot of stuff like that you know but hey this is uh this is what i'm doing when i'm not out filming youtube videos so i know everybody says i need to do daily videos and it's really really tough to actually run you know i mean i guess essentially three companies i got the construction company i've got the apparel company and then and you know if you treat youtube like a company i mean which it really is uh you know i'm essentially running three things so to juggle all three is not the easiest thing in the world but i'm doing it for you guys and i'm definitely trying to post more and more frequently so i want to thank everybody that's been along with me on the journey all of my uh, subscribers that are currently subscribed thank you guys anybody that has not subscribed hopefully you find my videos entertaining enough that you will be willing to click the subscribe button thumbs up and likes are also amazing so thank you guys for that i'm out damn uh. yeah uh. Yeah.